What is up guys, Jeffrey Gaming here, welcome back to my 80s classic season on F1 2013. This is round 3, so if you've missed the first two races, do go check them out and do subscribe if you are new to my channel. But uh, this time out, after two classic tracks, I suppose all of these are classic tracks really. We've done Silverstone, the Estoril Circuit in Portugal, we're going for Suzuka, which is always well known for 130R and Senna versus Pross, so will we have any moments like they did? Well. We're about to find out. We did have a moment of Silverstone between myself and Mansell and I am Schumacher, Michael Schumacher of course. So yeah, we'll wait and see if anything does happen but we get ready for the Japanese Grand Prix round 3. We've been pretty disappointing overall so far. I think it was a P7 and a P5 finish so we could do with a bit of an improvement. Looks like we're starting P4 and 5 for the Ferrari team here, my teammate. Gerhard, uh, Gerhard Berger just behind me and we're actually making setup changes for the first time obviously it's a high downforce track which is especially needed in the first sector should be interesting in these cars to see how we do Nigel Mansell on pole and Hill in third I think they're the two we're probably gonna be watching out for and trying to race to the victory so we're building up to the start of the Japanese Grand Prix. Five lights and away we go and we actually go up to second gear far too quickly and we get an awful start. Our teammates passed, Fittipaldi's passed, a number of cars are just swamping us. We need to fight back and there's the very, I think that was a very slow Prost in there. Uh, I forgot which car that is but uh, it's by far the slowest car. And yeah, the AI was shocking in turn one and two there. We get four positions back from doing just the normal start so yeah I think ourselves lucky with the F1 2016 AI looking at that we're on the back of Hakkinen now trying to close in we don't want to get held up behind the Lotus here because yeah we might not see I think it's Mansell in the lead we might not see him uh, until the finish if we don't overtake Mika here so we're coming through the deck and it's very tricky especially in these cars I'm still getting used to these cars so bear in mind my driving won't be 100% though I have taken traction control off which I did do in the past episode so there might be a few twitchy moments like that but it makes it so much funner especially in the first sector just fighting the back end all the time but Hakkinen run the back of him at the exit of Spoon he's got a horrible run there he bounces over the curb sparks flying there and it's an easy run well before 130 and we get ourselves up to P2 so yeah Mika in the Lotus made a mistake there but we're about to make a mistake we get on the power too early no traction control has hurt us there and Hakkinen gets straight back past us but I think we've got a straight line speed advantage so we're using the slipstream and we're actually gonna blast past him here can we get it into turn one I think we can there we go up to P2 he goes for a bit of a switch back but no he can't get it done and there we go that's the move we needed so at the start of lap two we're up to second position now to chase Nigel Mansell in the Williams I forget which year the Williams is I should probably do my research on these cars but uh yeah, let's see if we can close in on the great British driver. Coming off uh, the second lap, we're going on to lap three now. And we actually have set the fastest lap of the race with a 140.7. We've got some pretty decent pace. Closing down, Nigel. And the AI is on, what's the level called? Professional? It's the second highest. I'm thinking I might turn it up to legendary or whatever the name of the... Uh, highest difficulty level was on this game uh, we'll see how I do in terms of performance because I actually did this race a little while ago but uh, we're on the back of Mansell looking for the opportunity and hopefully getting our first podium never mind a first win we could do with a big points haul because the uh, the driver standings is so close at the moment but we've got a great run here we seem to have much better straight line speed we think about it on the entrance to Spoon but it's a little bit too risky and if we do have the straight line speed advantage it makes sense to wait until we come down here into 130R. So Mansell once again gets on that curb. The AI are getting on that curb and losing the back end. Which is not helping them at all. We fly back past the Williams there. And up into P1 just before 130R. We go a little bit too wide. I wasn't sure if uh, Mansell was going to go on the inside there. So I gave him a little bit too much room. And we're coming into the chicane a little bit deep. That's not going to help us. Mansell's all over the back of us. Keeping the back end. And he actually gets much better traction there. So much better uh, yeah, traction as I mentioned, confidence as well, and I can't believe he got through so easily there, but side by side running into turn one, this is so close, who's going to have the confidence on the brakes, and it's Nigel Mansell, we just, 
Into turn one, I didn't want to make contact. I, I think I had Silverstone in my mind. The contact we had, which lost, uh, they lost one of us the victory because us two were miles ahead. Just like this again. So yeah, fighting for the lead. Obviously, don't need contact. And there's still opportunities on these final two laps, so anything can happen. And oh, that's a tricky moment. Just before the what well, I've got the corners called. It's a uh, Dunlop, that's the one. I knew it was a tyre related uh, corner name, but um, yeah, shaky moment there. So easy to lose the car in their messes because you're just fighting all the time. Obviously, it doesn't have the grip of the modern day cars, but we seem to close in in this hairpin, uh, Kobayashi's hairpin. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's actually the official name, but we got awful traction there. So Mansell's built a bit of a buffer now, so. That might save him on this lap and yeah we could do we're getting close otherwise if we leave it too late we might not get the victory which uh, we don't really just I won't say we don't deserve but uh, I would really really bite someone's hand off for it so let's see if we can get a run coming into one for a 30 yard once again look at the straight line speed the slipstream isn't as powerful as F1 2016 but still pretty powerful I think we're probably gonna wait here it's a little bit too risky can we get him into the chicane is this gonna be a Prost and Senna moment up the inside is he gonna turn in he does not and we get the breaking done absolutely sorted brilliant move there up the inside yes Mansell didn't turn in like Prost did I'm not laying any blame there that could be a discussion for another day but we've taken the lead and Mansell's actually in my slipstream is he gonna go for the move into turn one let's see we look backwards a little bit too much oh he's very close indeed that proximity arrow I'm not sure how accurate it is but uh, it seemed like Mansell got very close there and we're coming to the end of the lap and it looks like we should have the race in the bag. Coming through 130R for the final time. No, we want to be keeping off the curbs. Uh, on this game, I remember curbs used to spit you out a little bit. But we're all good here through the final chicane. And we're coming to the line for the first victory for Michael Schumacher in the 88 Ferrari in this 80s season. Brilliant feeling. A brilliant result there. Great drive from Michael. And yeah, that's what I, th I really needed for this championship bid. Because to win as Michael Schumacher in a Ferrari would be an absolute dream here. So we took the victory. Uh, less than a second behind us was Nigel Mansell. His teammate makes up the podium and my teammate only ended up fourth but it, show, it probably does show who um, or what the best two cars are for sure. And as we look further down, actually, Alan Prost and Alan Jones in the slowest car, which is the Williams F W078, I had to read that off the really small screen. Didn't come last, so fair play to them. Sixth and seventh, that's a good performance there. Mika Hakkinen and retired. So in the driver's standings, it is incredibly close there. We're actually, I think we've jumped from seventh to second, and we're only four points behind Damon Hill. So it's going to be all about consistency, like it is in all my championship bids, and four points off the lead. Pretty good, a point ahead of Andretti, who we haven't really raced at all. He must have had three very consistent finishes in around fourth, fifth, or fifth place. So good job from him and oh my god look how close it is in the constructors That's gonna be an incredible battle. I think we can rule out probably the bottom two teams at the moment But uh, yeah tune in next time for the next race in this incredible season So if you have enjoyed this video, please do leave a like subscribe if you haven't already to my channel Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next race. Goodbye